And Turkish Defense Ministry says three ships loaded with grain under a recently concluded deal have left Ukrainian ports. The Joint Coordination Center in Istanbul, which groups Russian, Ukrainian, Turkish and UN personnel, said two ships were setting off from Chernomorsk and one from Odessa. The three ships, carrying a total of 58,000 tons of corn, have been authorized to leave Ukrainian ports as part of a deal to unblock grain exports. The Turkish Defense Ministry said on Twitter the Panama-flagged Navista carrying 33,000 tons of corn and going from Ukraine to Ireland, departed from Odessa port. The ship will be inspected by the Joint uh, Coordination Center to the north of Istanbul. The second ship, the Maltese-flagged Orion, carrying 30, uh, 13,000 tons of corn, departed from a Chernomorsk port uh, bound for Britain. And uh, the Turkish Defense Ministry is saying that a team of inspectors in Turkey have just completed uh, checking an empty cargo ship before it headed off to collect grain from the Ukrainian port of Chonomosk under a deal to restart Ukrainian gas, uh, grain exports. The ministry published photos and Twitter showing the inspection team looking into the hold and other areas of the Barbados flagged general cargo ship Former S, which was at anchor in the Black Sea just to the north of Istanbul's Bosphorus Straits. Vessels to load Ukrainian grain are being inspected by Russian, Ukrainian, Turkish and UN personnel who are working at that joint coordination centre in Istanbul. Let's talk now to Sergei Glebov, Associate Professor in the Department of International Relations at the Institute of Social Sciences in Odessa, uh, uh, one Mekinov National University. He joins us uh, virtually from Odessa uh, uh, there in uh, Ukraine. Good morning to you. Thank you for your time uh, this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start off from what we've just been reporting, the grain exports uh, coming out of Odessa, amongst other ports uh, in Ukraine. It does appear to be going smoothly. Does that come as a, a, a surprise to you, uh, considering how all of this started? Uh, so, you know, this is the uh, good sign indeed, absolutely good sign. At least we are watching the whole process uh, being started. Uh, in a more, more or less uh, positive way. But uh, let us do not forget that uh, this is not just the will of Ukraine or the rest of the world. This is the will of Russia to let those ships go. Uh, meaning that as soon as this situation is in the interests of uh, the Russian Federation, it, it, it continues to, to be that for the next uh, weeks uh, or uh, whatever. But once Russia understands that this is not the primary interest of its foreign policy at the moment, it may interrupt the whole process immediately. So meaning that uh, uh, Russia is being driven by uh, their own tactical and strategical interests. For the moment, it matches their expectations for uh, many reasons. The first reason is to show the rest of the world that Russia is quite reliable and negotiable. This is uh, the tool to support its image of the good dealer. The second one, Russia understand that at the moment there is there are no any chances to attack Odessa. That's why they can take some kind of a break uh, to play another game vis-a-vis uh, -vis Turkey, vis-a-vis -vis personally uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, which is about to meet Putin uh, today, later today. So um, I believe that uh, we're uh, we're witnessing the temporal uh, process of rearranging uh, Russia's interests in the region, uh, depending on the uh, situation on the battlefield on the territory of Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine, uh, since this conflict started, Ukraine has. Uh, come across uh, from every angle as the victim and uh, Russia as the aggressor. Uh, but it does appear as if, uh, for the first time, uh, uh, an international body is accusing Ukraine, too, of doing uh, something or some things that are not uh, completely in tune 
uh, with international best practices, shall we say. And that is Amnesty International's report that Ukraine has been using uh, uh, residential areas and uh, military, uh, uh, sorry, hospitals uh, as uh, military bases. This has been denied by Ukraine, but uh, I I'm wondering if uh, you, if you have a, a, a view about that, is it a fair comment, especially since Amnesty International is on ground and went to those sites, so they're not talking from afar? Uh, so, you know, I do believe that this is absolutely an appropriate approach from the site of Amnesty, Amnesty International. I, uh, we just heard the message from my President Zelensky as to the case, and I do think this is not the right way to equalize the aggressor and the victim. Uh, Ukraine is not the victim. Uh, Ukraine is trying to defend itself bravely, and uh, it was a huge surprise for the many uh, powers around the globe that Ukraine is still succeeding in its uh, strategic um, uh, aim to uh, defend the whole country, to keep independence, and to um, pursue the victory uh, in the end. Uh, from the side of the international law, there could be some shortages of the war period and the battlefield. But let us do not forget that uh, Ukraine is trying to uh, defend, is trying to uh, counterattack. Uh, Ukrainian army is uh, trying to do as much as possible in this uh, crazy situation. And of course, Ukraine is standing and Ukrainian army is standing uh, in, on the side of the civilians. And sometimes it's ready and it has to attack from the uh, civilian um, sides of the battlefield. I do think that Amnesty International is playing uh, basically Russian narrative as to the uh, case. And, uh, you know, uh, from the, um, I mean, general principle perspective of this situation, this is not the uh, case of... Uh, a threat on the territory of the Russian Federation. This is the territory of Ukraine, and Ukraine has to do all the possibility, all the possible, to defend civilians. Also, by attacking from the civilian sites, if it uh, had happened, uh, this is not the problem. The problem is how to treat, how to examine, and how to propose to the rest of the world the um, uh, war narrative in Ukraine. I do believe that, unfortunately, Amnesty International is uh, going and continuing the Russian narrative as to the bad Ukrainians on the bad Ukrainian uh, homeland. You are in Odessa, so I, I want to end our conversation this morning uh, on that note. You are in Odessa, and uh, before this grain deal got underway, Odessa was attacked uh, 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 um, in the run-up, in the immediate aftermath of the agreement on the deal. So uh, the question is, do you uh, feel safe? Uh, what's been the situation like on ground in Odessa since that time uh, and now? And um, what's everyday life like uh, do you have water? Do you have easy access to medicines and food? Or is it, uh, you know, a mixture of all of this? Odessa is uh, more or less safe, of course, comparing to the rest uh, parts of uh, Ukraine, uh, closer to the uh, real war, to the real battlefield. But uh, this is not just the war of tanks. This is the war of missiles, rockets, and Ukraine, as well as any part, as any city, as any town in Ukraine, it doesn't matter whether it is eastern part or western part or central part or the southern part, all the uh, people uh, on the territory of Ukraine under the permanent and contest uh, um, threat. So uh, we do have water here, we do have electricity here, but we also have Mykolaiv, the city of Mykolaiv, uh, right uh, next to uh, Odessa. We have occupied here Son, and we do know that Russia is trying to prepare its attack on uh, um, Odessa very soon. There are different schemes how to do this, 
routes through the uh, Krivi or some other destinations uh, from the occupied already territories. So this is kind of the very temporal situation when you uh, when Odessa can feel itself uh, comparatively uh, safe. But definitely, it's a big deal for the uh, for the country. It's a big deal for the Odessa people uh, to stand uh, all together against the Russian invasion. And uh, there are no any doubt that Odessa is pretty much uh, safe in terms of the uh, defense from the side of the Ukrainian army. And the most important thing that uh, Odessa people are very extremely pro-Ukrainian in their souls and their minds and in their deeds. Sergey uh, Glevov, uh, thank you so much for your uh, perspective and uh, for your time uh, this morning. Do continue to stay safe out there in Odessa. Uh, we'll get back to you soon uh, on the program. Thank, thank you, you so much. much this morning. Yeah.